now that you've tested an online term extractor, it's time to ask the question, how is it done? What do these tools do with the uploaded text to come up with lists of term candidates? Um, like for most language processing challenges, there are two main strands of approaches to term extraction. The first one using linguistic information, um, and the second one using pure statistics. And as we, sh we shall see later on, most state-of-the-art approaches employ both. And for machine learning approaches, it is difficult to say whether they belong to the rule-based or to the statistical strand, these would best be called data-driven approaches. Um, what is important to understand is that all linguistically informed approaches are uh, language-specific in that they require uh, linguistic preprocessing. Uh, usually, uh, these, uh, this consists of morphosyntactic tagging um, and uh, lemmatization as the minimum for term extraction. On the, other t uh, on the other hand, there are tools, for example, the term extractors offered by some uh, commercial translation applications such as um, SDL or MemoQ, um, and they need to remain language independent so that they offer a broad range of languages um, and therefore they use purely statistical methods to identify terms. Uh, it uh, must be noted that these are of course uh, less accurate than the linguistically informed approaches. Uh, now, if there is no formal distinction between words and terms, as we have seen in previous uh, units, um, how do we go about designing an algorithm that will uh, distinguish between words and terms in computational terms? Um, so let's now introduce some notions that have been explored and are in part still used for this purpose. In the early day statistical approaches, the domain relevance or the, um, the termhood of a certain unit the termhood of a certain unit uh, was measured through DFIDF, for example. This is uh, quite a prominent measure uh, in information retrieval uh, or um, keyness. For uh, multi word expressions, on the other hand, a number of statistical measures of uh, unithood have been proposed, um, a measuring the, the syntagmatic strength of uh, multi-word associations. Uh, and later these were rep uh, replaced in linguistically informed approaches by so-called patterns or um, term grammars. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, there are uh, most of the approaches nowadays are hybrid, combining both patterns or term grammars, domain relevance and various filters. Uh, to come back to, um, to keyness, keyness is a very simple method of testing the domain relevance of a word by comparing its relative frequency in a specialized corpus with its relative frequency in a non-specialized general or reference corpus. So the example that we see here on the slide is that um, if we imagine we're exploring a specialized corpus of music theory uh, and I want to know whether modulation in this corpus can be considered a term or a keyword for this corpus. Uh, so uh, the, the basic idea is comparing the relative frequency of modulation in the small corpus with the, the relative frequency of modulation in a large corpus and this is um, calculated as follows. So the relative frequency uh, of uh, keyness in the specialized corpus divided by the relative frequency in the large corpus will give you a score or a value and um, if this value is larger than one then the word can be considered um, keyword in the specialized corpus. So um, this value, the larger, the larger it is, the better. So the um, the uh, more specific uh, the, the word in question is. Um, 
This is one example of uh, such results um, from the um, one-click service offered by Sketch Engine, where you can see the single words computed with uh, the measure of keywords uh, presented just on the previous slide. Uh, now if we go on to um, the idea of unithood, uh, this is relevant for multi-word terms, which are usually expected to be relatively stable and frequent combinations of two or more words, so that we may start by approximating multi-word terms to collocations. Um, now, in uh, language processing, collocations are often extracted by hypothesis testing, where the null hypothesis states that there is no association uh, between the words we are observing beyond chance occurrences. So basically that the words um, uh, occurred together in a corpus purely by chance. Now, of course, if we can reject the null hypothesis, then uh, we are basically proving the opposite so that the word group can be considered a collocation and uh, therefore perhaps a candidate for a multi-word term. Um, a number of statistical methods have been proposed uh, to measure this association, uh, association strength between words. Um, all are based on a comparison between uh, observed frequencies and expected frequencies. And uh, here I've listed just a couple that are still quite often used in corpus tools, such as the t-test, mutual information, log dice, but there are others such as the log likelihood, high square, jacquard co coefficient, and so on. Um, let me just say that if uh, all of these um, statistical notions are completely new to you, uh, there is a, a, a recommended reading that I've listed here, the chapter 5 of um, the very well known book by Manning and Schutze. Uh, which discusses collocations and the mathematical foundations of these calculations.